Good morning, y'all. Project's moving along and I wanted to update you on it. Uh, I've got something that I did two days ago that's kind of exciting to me. I like the way it worked out. I had a problem that I needed to solve. A few weeks ago, I realized that when I top balance these cells on these big batteries, uh, the, the cells are completely full and, I, and then I put them into a 48 volt battery and I didn't have any way of reducing the state of charge and I didn't want to leave them sitting at 100% and I would like to be able to test the 48 volt battery once it's in a battery and see if I have any um, running runners, any cells that are depleting faster than others. And short of hooking that up to one of the inverters that I'm gonna use for the overall system, which I didn't wanna go through the trouble of trying to set those up temporarily, I didn't have a way of doing it. So I went online and I bought a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And I built a, a little setup here that I'd like to show you and, and show you how it's working out. So, this is the battery as it sits today. It's all complete. And this is the device that I put together to um, help me deplete the energy once the battery is together. So, let me show you how this worked out. So, these are the cells. And they're... You know, I, I've shown you in previous videos the wiring harness that I made, how I installed the BMS in these wooden boxes, and you can go back and look at those videos if you're new to the channel. But um, this is how it's gone together. It's pretty neat. I have a four gauge jumper wire here at the end. And in a previous video, I had shown you building the wiring harness. I had taken, uh, this Seplos BMS has a negative nine wire, a nine cell negative wire and an eight positive, which in the end, it goes to the same location. But the, um, I, I just thought that I could take those two and join them together and connect them in one spot. In reading the instructions later, I found out that Seplos actually takes a reading of resistance between those two to show what the resistance of a single bus bar is. And by wiring them together, I had short-circuited their attempt to adjust their controls to the resistance of your bus bars. Now, these bus bars, as I showed in a previous video, these bus bars are not the bus bars I'm gonna use in the final version because these bus bars came from the, manuf from the uh, seller that sold me these cheap cells and they sent me brass bus bars, which you, you, you shouldn't use brass bus bars. They have four times the resistance of copper bus bars, however, I will also say that they have the same resistance as this four gauge wire. And um, that's about uh, 0.17 milliohms. Whereas a copper bus bar has about 0 0.4, 0 0.04 milliohms. And so um, I have separated those out. Now, I put this together and into the pack and I fired up the Seplos BMS and it uh, is working just fine. But how am I using this? So I built a device. Here's the 3000 watt inverter that I purchased. And I set it up on a piece of alu extruded aluminum that I've had in a scrap pile for 20 some odd years. I cut a piece of that off and it hooks over the edge of the box. 
And I've got some little rubber bumpers on there to keep from scarring the box. And I screwed from the back side a piece of three quarter inch plywood. I took a piece of this, this, uh, this is the same piece that I made for building up these disconnect uh, pieces. I, I had a scrap of it left and I took a piece of it and I cut it in such a way that I could mount this um, display for a shunt on it. And so now I can take the same disconnect on the battery pack that I'm going to use for the permanent situation. Okay, that sound, if you can hear it, that's the sound of this 3000 watt inverter running its cooling fans and it doesn't run them for very long but it's really loud so if you uh if you find an inverter like this online and are interested in purchasing it so far my experience with it is fine except it's very noisy when the cooling fan comes on this is a piece of the um cutting board material that i used in between the cells this this material right here and I have it wrapped around this connection right now with zip ties just to protect these, this connection because what I've done is I hard bolted the shunt directly to the terminal of the inverter and then took the cable and connected it to the other side of that. Stabilized it with a little angle bracket and this is the potential for a short across here of 48 volts, which would blow my class T fuse that you have there in the bottom of the battery box. And so I just went ahead and wrapped this around it with zip ties to protect that. The cool thing about this unit is I can pull this Anderson connector and lift this off in a few seconds and move it from one box to the other. And while it's on there, it gives me the ability to draw 3000 watts from this 14.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is <laughs> just like with the solar generator and its booster pack and the flexibility it gives me to have those as separable items. This gives me a lot of flexibility that I can take this battery pack and separate it from the system at any point I want and use this inverter to either supply power um, in a remote location or use it for testing uh, the battery pack when I'm working on it. So I'm glad I didn't, I didn't want to spend the $300 to buy this inverter, but I'm glad I did. It's going to be very handy, $350, I guess. It's going to be very handy to have this. I'm in the midst of testing. The shunt says that I have taken 136 amp hours out of the battery so far. And, well, and it says I have taken 7.18 kilowatt hours out. It's been running for almost two days. And what I'm using it for is the, um, actually, let, let me finish this. So this says that I have taken 6.11 kilowatt hours out of the inverter. But I have taken 7.18 kilowatt hours out of the battery. And if you do the math, I, I, I've been doing this off and on as I've been draining this down. When you do the math, that means that this inverter is about 86% or 85% efficient. It's been running in that range. It uses 20 watts when you have no load on it at all. And so my suspicion is that when I'm using more than the, currently I'm using 226 watts 
And my suspicion is that if I was using more than that, that the efficiency would go up some because that 20 watts that it uses just by being on uh, would be absorbed. Uh, and there's that noise again. I don't know if you can hear that on the video. It's, it's pretty loud. All right, let's move along. I have the display here for the Seplos BMS. And uh, you can see I've got some labels that I've added here to uh, make it a little easier to know what those four buttons are. But it's showing a pack voltage of 52.34 volts now. And it thinks that this battery pack is 200 amp hours by default. It doesn't change that until it has run through a complete cycle of the battery. And then it's going to learn that this one is really closer to 268 or something like that. Now, when I go look at cell voltages, it looks like the cell voltages are really even. Not bad at all. Until you get to cell number 12. Yeah, I got a runner. That one is 50 millivolts lower than the others. All the other cells are equal except for cell number 12. Now I have these labeled. This is battery pack 1, cell 16. And over here is battery pack 1, cell 12. And that is a unique number of cell number 101 from when I first received them. Now, why would cell 101 have such a drastically different capacity. And if you look on the chart here, these are all the, the cells 1 through 16. And when you look at cell number 12, it tested at 268. These first four that do so well, they tested at 267. These were supposed to be 280 amp hour cells. They're actually 271 amp hour cells and they're not new or else they would be testing at somewhere around 280 even though they're rated at 271. So these are used cells I was sold and there'll be a future video when that is finally resolved to let you know how that worked out. Over here on this, in these columns, it shows which box they were. They were supposed to be grouped. And so cell number one was, one, was in box number 1.3 and it was supposed to be a 268 amp hour. So this is the one that's a possible runner, cell number 12. And it was in a box that said it was 268 amp hours. And it tested at 268 amp hours. And the internal resistance was 0.17 milliohms, which was similar to the ones that are performing quite well. And it weighed 11.6 pounds. These first four were a little bit higher, but one of them was 11.6 pounds. So there's really no indication based on the testing that I did that this cell would be a runner. But it certainly is. It's racing to the bottom. So what I'm gonna end up doing is taking another cell. When this, is, when this test is complete, I will charge this battery back up. And when I get it back up towards full, I will take a cell and charge it up to full and I will replace cell number 12 and I'll get this battery packed to where it doesn't have a runner in it. And I'll continue to do that with all 12 of these batteries that I'm doing. So, right now, I'm using the energy to 
test, continue to test these cells. I have tested uh, between 80 and 90 of these cells now, and I have a lot more to go. And I'm testing it with these units. I uh, was going to make a video on these units that I'm using, and I'm glad I waited because I have one other power supply here, and this one is now dead. There's a rectifier circuit that has fried on it, even though it was only being used at 3.65 volts and 5 amps, and it's supposed to be 0 to 60 volts and 0 to 5 amps. But after a month of testing cells and charging cells for testing, it quit working. And so I'm working with the seller now to figure out what to do about that. And of course, after a couple of days of talking to them, there's uh, a lot of back and forth about how surely I did something wrong. But as I work through it, uh, it appears that they're going to Go ahead and take care of it, but it is now the weekend in China, and we'll talk to them again on Monday. In the meantime, I'm really happy with this setup. I just wanted to make a video and let you see how it's going and, and how this project is progressing. I have started to <laughs> I have started to frame now on the solar shed. The weather's cooled off here and it's very nice out. I've gotten some very expensive, a small pile of very expensive lumber. And I am uh, about to head out and start framing up some walls for the solar shed and moving this project forwards. So thank you for being with me on the channel. If you watch this far on the video, surely you can hit that like button. And I hope you've already subscribed and Leave a comment for me. Let me know what you think about what we've gotten done so far. And uh, I love that interaction. And we'll talk to you on the next video. Thanks.